Hi, Miranda. How are you? I'm good, Judy. Thank you. How are you too? I'm good. Uh, so Miranda is joining us from South Africa. She is a Her Voice Ambassador for Cameron for Global Fund for Women. Miranda, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Julie. I am very excited to be here and thanks for the invite. I'm looking forward to an amazing time with you. So I'm sure that people around the world, all women around the world who are with the small initiative would want to understand the kind of work you're doing. And I think you have had a fantastic journey so far. So do you want to tell my viewers about what exactly are you doing? Okay, firstly, I am a youth activist and uh, one who is it's very much inclined to global health, uh, feminist values and um, um, building communities like community development. Okay. So um, as an ambassador, my work is mostly focused on strengthening communities where we have adolescent girls and young women, especially those uh, living with HIV. Okay. Yeah. So most of the work we do is in reaching out with them, reaching out to them, yeah, and helping them, like in by organizing support programs for them, providing them with funds that will support um, the treatment and management of HIV, and also building their skills and providing them with resources and information that will help them make better decisions that concern them, as well as we also advocate for gender equality okay. and every. Yeah, and everything that concerns the adolescent girl and young women, we we participate in ensuring that they make the best decisions that concern them and they are meaningfully engaged in spaces where they can speak up about their rights, about their health and about the things that concern them. So it's all about engaging adolescent girls and young women in every decision that concerns them. So, yeah, Miranda, do you have any advice for young girls around the world? I think you're doing a fantastic job, but there are so many women around the world who want to start somewhere and, you know, they they would really appreciate any any kind of advice you have for them uh, who want to work in the okay. sector. Um, talking from a point of view, I, I believe that education is, is, is key in I mean, in everybody's progress, especially for the girl child and the young women. And the advice I would like to give to uh, the young women out there is, um, if you get an opportunity to have an education, don't misuse that opportunity. Go for it, because once you get an education, you are very much in informed. Yeah. You are not the same like the others who haven't had the opportunity to get an education. With an education, you're exposed to different spheres of life with different people you interact with different people and even your choices are different because you know better you know your own rights and all and for those who have the opportunity to have an education make the best out of it and you shouldn't just focus on the school like the book and the pen and the, the i mean the whole theory of it you, you can go out there and i mean go the extra mile and get engaged in things that happen around you. There's a lot of community um, development groups, there's peer support groups, there's a lot of activism going on out there. Get involved, get engaged and be part of the change. Like if you see that there's a need in your community, because in every community, I believe there are needs. Um, step out there to identify those needs and make a move to reach out to those needs and cause an impact. No matter how small you are doing something, the impact is always going to be huge if you're consistent. And so the advice I'll give girls out there is step out of your comfort zones and look, there's always a need to meet, to, to, to meet. And regardless of your age, regardless of your background, if you make up your mind that, okay, this is what I want to do, then you're going to be able to do it. So do not limit yourselves, be bored about everything. And if you're uncomfortable about the situation around you, you should be bold enough to, to speak out and your voice may be just very timely and it will change something. I know oftentimes we as women and, and girls are being discriminated upon, especially those who grew up in uh, rural community settings. Yeah. But times are changing now, and this is the time to, to take the opportunity and the chance. So if you're uncomfortable about something, and if you know it's just not right, be bold enough to speak out. There may be just one person waiting for you to speak out, and, and that will be the move. That will be the start of the change. And yeah, so don't be scared about what's happening around you. Just be bored. This is the era for women to wake up. This is the era for girls to 
to step in and be part of the change. You don't want to be left behind. So be bold, go out there, get an education and study and I mean, just get engaged meaningfully. You know, when you know what you're talking about, you make a better contribution. And obviously when the contribution is, is, is wealthy, they can't just put it aside because yeah. So get out there, be bold and be intentional. Yeah, very true. So Miranda, the other question we have is that you have been working with, uh, I mean, you're doing amazing work and you've been working with so many young girls. Any memorable experiences you had which stand out from the others, which you want to share it with my viewers? Okay, I would like to share an experience where we, I was attending a meeting yeah. that was um, actually to bring to birth new strategies that will better suit different groups of people. For example, the groups of um, adolescent girls and young women, groups of people living with HIV, groups of young people living with HIV, groups of the LGBT and Q and just, just this, those different groups of people. Yeah. And so the consultations uh, were held and this was the closeout meeting where uh, the approaches, uh, the, the new approaches and strategies were supposed to be uh, documented and we started to implement them. So while at the meeting, the approaches were being laid out and we were talking about all of them. And that was actually the, the closeout meeting, but then nothing was mentioned about um, adolescent girls and young women. Well, I actually led the consultations for that and myself and some other people. Yeah. So, and it was actually the, the, the end of the meeting and nothing was being mentioned about it. So I, I had to boldly come up and speak about it. I was like, um, we led the consultations for the adolescent girls and young women and this is the new strategy and you guys have not mentioned anything about us here. Yeah. So this is just tokenism. You, 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 mean, you, you claim you out for us, but actually you're not there for And so I was bold enough to lend my voice and speak out and I was like, this is not happening and this is not right. You guys need to include us here because we are part of this and every strategy and approach needs to be tailored also to fit us because our challenges are different, our experiences are different and our needs are also different. True. So after I spoke out, uh, <laughs> everything had to stop there and they had to, 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 to bring up new implementation plans and new strategies to, to better fit the adolescent girls and young women. And these are one of the very key, huge meetings. I'm not going to call the name because yeah, it's yeah, very, yeah. Yeah. And it was, I think that was the great move there because if there was nobody to represent the voices of adolescent girls and young women, trust me, and the that's the strategy for the next four years. So you can imagine four years without having approaches to favor young girls and young women yeah. until the next one again. So because I added my voice there, um, the approaches, the, the, the new strategies were better tailored to, to fit the needs of adolescent girls and young women. And that was uh, a moment I really felt proud of myself because this, I mean, very few young women and girls were able to attend the meeting because um, it was very strategic, yeah. But I was opportune to be at the meeting and I didn't just um, sit there just watching and listening to everyone say huge things and all oh, I was Mean, I was there to meaningfully engage and yeah. because I, I led, I, I extended my voice, I, I supported, I spoke out, then things changed. And that's what it means for girls. If girls can just speak out yes. at every given opportunity. So that's one moment I, I, feel, I felt proud of the work I do. I think that is a fantastic advice for a lot of girls who are watching this interview. And Miranda, I think you have a fantastic future ahead of you and you are leading the movement. But where do you see yourself in another few years? What do you want to achieve in another few years? Um, where I see myself in the, in the next few years, the, the cause for gender equality and for women and girls to be involved in key spaces and in decision making would not just happen now. It's going to be a gradual process. So I see myself a few years now. I, I don't think this, I have attained the, the level of self-efficacy. I still see myself advocating for these things to happen because trust me, um, back in Cameroon, back in my COVID, there's, there's some communities where women still don't have access to this information. Women still do not know their rights. Women still do not know that uh, their voices are, are necessary and are needed. 
So in the next years, I still see, my, see myself trying to to fight for this to, to 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 happen, to fight for gender equality. I still see myself being an advocate for for young women and girls. For example, in the next five years, I'll be I'll be 30 because I'm 25 now, and I will still be considered as a young woman. And I still see myself going all out, but in a bigger measure because. I am trying as much as I can to, to get involved in so many key spaces where my voice will not just be an echo, but my voice will be meaningful. And so the next few years, I still see myself fighting and I'm putting in my best and, and even reaching out to more in, to, to more people with, with impact and, and steering change in communities and all over the world. I think that is fantastic and I wish you luck for it. And I understand that uh, you have been busy, thank but thank you, you so much for taking out time and giving me this interview. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you so much, Julie. This is something I love talking about. So when you, you, you contacted me for this interview, I was like, oh, wow. And I've been following your interviews. I've seen the few ones you've done with uh, a few people I know, and they've been really amazing. Thank you for the work you do. And, you're doing a really good job. And anytime we can always talk about this over and over again, maybe we can yeah. with uh, about different topics and different things, but I'll be so glad we did it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So if you're watching this channel for the first time, we have, we have some amazing women on this platform. So do subscribe to my channel. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you so much, Julie. Have a good time and thank you for the interview. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you.